front here you've got your hitch and your A-frame. So when you go to reverse up to connect the van to your vehicle, you can use your jockey wheel to raise and lower this hitch to the right height. When you lower it down onto your tow ball, this handle will lock down like this. And this little red button will pop up with a green ring around it so you know that it's secured onto your tow ball properly. You can then lower the secondary lever. There is some Alco brake pads in here that squeeze in onto your tow ball. You have a breakaway cable instead of a chain. So this is designed to loop around the tow ball and clip back onto itself. And that just sits underneath the tow ball there. This is so that if for some reason this hitch ever gave way, it'll pull and snap and it'll put your handbrake on. You've got a standard 7-pin trailer plug. Your handbrake, much like a car, push down for off, pull up for on. Once you've got your hitch all connected, you need to get your jockey wheel out of the way. So you're going to wind it up so that these arms slot up into these grooves. That just gets the jockey wheel up as high as it can go and it stops it spinning around when you're towing the van. You can then undo this red handle and pull the whole jockey wheel unit up so that it's resting here against your A-frame. When you get to the campground and you want to disconnect the van from your vehicle, you're going to do that in reverse. So you're going to undo this red handle, drop the jockey wheel unit down and tighten it back up. You'll pop your handbrake on, you'll lift the secondary lever, you then need to lift and hold this first lever while you wind your jockey wheel up. If you don't lift and hold this lever up, it's not going to release your tow ball, it's just going to pull it up with the vehicle. Now, your van does have ATC, so that's active trailer control. What that means is there is sensors underneath the van, so that if it ever starts to get out of line with the vehicle, it'll break each wheel individually to bring it back into line. In order for this to have its wee green light and work, you do need to have this 7 pin trailer plug changed to a 12 pin trailer plug. That means that the wiring has to be changed on not only the van but also your towing vehicle. So you will need an auto electrician to do this if that's something you want to use. Around the side of your van here, this is where you plug in for your mains power. So you've got your mains power cord. You're going to hold this cap back at sort of a 90 degree angle because it does slot up and sit above the plug. There is a groove on the van, um, so it does go on the one way. So you can hold it up, slide it in, and then you'll hear it click so you know it's in place properly. You can drop that lid back down a little bit, but once you've got that plugged in, you'll be good to go for mains power. Just behind your mains power here, this is your water housing unit. So you've got your fresh water barrel, so you want to fill that right up. Undo the cap on the top. You can then drop your pump pickup all the way down to the bottom. You do have a little cap that you can adjust to sit just inside this little gap here. Keep any dust and dirt out. Uh, when you go to plug this in, you're going to hold it by the base. It does correspond, so it does only go on that one way. And push that in. It will slot up into the top. This is so you can push the little lid down and it just locks it into place. So once you've got that all set up, you can then go inside and turn your water pump on. Now, there is no gauge inside the van or on this barrel, so you do need to keep a bit of an eye on it. You don't really want it to get below sort of quarter of the way empty, just because these pumps can start to curl up out of the water and it'll run dry without you knowing. When you go to remove the pump from the van, you have to hold it from the base. Don't hold it on this sort of skeleton part, because if you do break this, it will start to let air get inside your pump. So just make sure you pop that lid back up and pull it out from there. So this here is the vent for your Audi water heater. So when you're running the water heater on gas, you will get warm to hot air coming out of here, but that's entirely normal. Just to the left of that here is the lock for your gas bottles. So there's space for two nine kilo gas bottles in here. And it's a very sort of standard barbecue spin on connection. If for some reason you ever want to shut the gas entirely off the source, you can flick this little yellow lever around and that will shut the gas off entirely. Just make sure that you do come in and open that up when you want to use it again. So just behind your wheels here up the top, this is the filler for your flushing water for your toilet. Depending on the model it generally takes about 8 to 10 litres in here, um, but it is more of a visual reference so once you start to get water in this trough you'll know that it's nice and full. 
there's a pink toilet chemical that goes in here. It's designed to help with smell, but it also helps lubricate all the seals inside your toilet pump. In the locker below here, this is where your toilet cassette is. So when you're going to empty this, you'll lift it up so it's up over that ridge, and it'll slide out. Now, the things inside the circle here are operated inside the van, so you don't need to worry about that. Your toilet cassette does have wheels, so you can lift this orange handle up over the grey tabs, and that way you can wheel it away to the dump station. Just make sure when you go to put it back in the van that you clip back in behind those tabs again. Once you're at the dump station, you'll want to spin this spout out. If you're having a bit of trouble getting this lid off, you do have a little air release valve at the bottom that you can push and hopefully that'll loosen up so you can take your cap off. You can then empty it out into the dump station. Now your cap does have little measurements on it. This is designed to measure out the blue toilet chemical. So again, this helps with smell, but it also helps break everything in your cassette down so it's nice and easy to empty. So you pop some of that in, bring it back to the van, you can then slide it in and just make sure it clicks back in behind that crew. The only other thing to know about in this van, so the only other thing to know about is you've got your cassette and then just off to the right hand side here, this little hose. What you want to do when you're storing the van, especially over winter, is you'll pull this bung and that will drain all the water out of the flush tank in your toilet. So it prevents your pump from seizing from sitting in water for a long time and it also helps prevent any frost damage within the system. Just below your toilet locker here, underneath the lip of the van, this is where your grey water outlets are. So you open up these caps, you've got your grey water hose and you just push that into there. You then undo the bottom cap on your caddy and then you can just pop the hose into there. Now you do have a gauge at the top of the caddy so you can keep an eye on when it's getting full. Under this lid here you have a bungee cord so you can strap the caddy around the wheel or the chassis to stop it rolling around in the wind or you can pop your toilet cassette on here, strap it in and empty them both at the same time. You then have this little cap and spout. This is designed that once you're at the dump station, you can then pop this on the bottom and it'll give you a nice direct pour when you go to empty it. Up on the front corner on the door side of your van here in this wee locker, this is so that you can run a barbecue off the gas bottles inside the van. So you've got this little bayonet fitting here that you pop on the bottom. You can then run a piece of pipe from the van to the barbecue. Now that piece of pipe cannot have a regulator on it because the gas bottles are already regulated inside the van. So if you double regulate it, it won't work. So just inside above your door, as soon as you come into the van here, you've got sort of your main control panel. So up on the top left here, this is your main master switch. So when you pop that on, it'll turn everything back on. Any lights or anything that you've left on will come back on. You've then got your water pump so you can come in turn that on and that'll liven up your water pump as i said before there's no gauge um, for the water barrel outside so it's really important when you go to refill it that you do make sure you turn this pump off just so it doesn't run dry uh, you've got the main power switch for all your 12 volt lights and then also to turn your awning light on and off as well uh, this little button on the bottom right um, isn't wired to anything so you don't need to worry about that and then the wee battery light here you can push and hold it and then you can get a gauge on how charged your battery is. Next to that here is the switch for your water pump for internal and external so you're going to keep it on external and turn your pump on when you're wanting to use the water barrel on the outside of the van or if you're wanting to fill up the onboard tank in the caravan. If you want to use the onboard tank in the caravan, you will need to flick it to the internal water pump. So underneath your front seating here, this is your onboard water tank. Now, when you're wanting to use this, there's a little valve in behind here. So the way that the valve is currently sitting at the moment means that you will be getting water directly from your water barrel on the outside of the van. So when you want to use water from the outside of the van, make sure that this little valve is in the sideways position. 
and that you've got your external water pump on. Now when you want to fill your onboard tank, you'll want to push it down so it's in the straight so it's in this straight position and you'll want to still have the external pump on because it's going to fill your onboard tank from the outside and then once you have filled your onboard tank and you want to use it you want to pop this valve back into the sideways position just like this um, that will prevent any ear locks or anything like that when you're using the onboard tank so you'll pop the valve back in this position and then switch to the internal water pump and that will use the water from your onboard tank now when you're storing the van especially over winter what you want to do is come to this valve turn it like so and this is going to drain all the water out of your onboard tank so it's going to prevent any frost damage um, in the tank and any of the pipe work around it you do also next to this onboard tank have your LD unit you don't really need to worry about this it does its own thing based on the control panel that I will show you um, but when you're storing the van over winter you'll also want to drain your water heater so you're going to lift up this yellow tab and it's going to drain all the water out of your Audi water heater. Just when you go to use the van again, you will want to come and pop this back down and pop the valve in the right direction for your onboard water tank. Nothing drastic will happen if you don't, it's just that when you go to use the water, it is going to drain directly out the bottom of your van. You do have this little control panel for the coloured lights along the front of your van, so you can turn those on. You do have a mode button, so you can sort of select how quickly you want them to change colour, or you can pre-select the colour yourself on any pieces on this wee dial. And then it just lights up along the front seating there. This little piece in the floor, this is how you get to one of your deep cycle batteries so that's there if you ever need to get to it um, the additional battery has just been fitted up under the front corner of the seating there so just above your kitchen bench here this is the controls for your Audi room and water heater so you just press the on button give it a few seconds and it'll turn on so this screen that we've got here this is the temperature for your room heater so it does go up in 0.5 degree increments, it goes all the way up to 30 and then you can take it all the way back down if you like. Now it does only act as a room heater, so even if it's 25 degrees outside and you want it to be, you know, sort of 18 in the van, um, unfortunately it will not act like an aircon and cool the van down, it is only designed to act as a room heater, so you can select your temperature from there you'll then want to hit the menu button this is going to take you to the settings so you've got a few different settings here so up the top here we've got night mode and we've got day mode so for the night mode you can pop that on you can select whichever days of the week you would like night mode to work and you can select the time so you can select your room heater temperature and you could also select your if you want your water heater to come on or not. So you can select the temperatures, you can select what time you want them to, to come on and what time you want them to turn off. So you can have it come on while you're sleeping, you can organise the time so that when you wake up you've got nice hot water, um, but you don't have to select every day, so you can do every day but the weekend or whichever tickles you fancy, or you can turn it off entirely. And then day mode is very similar, but obviously the reverse for day. So you can turn that on, you can select the temperature and whether or not you want your hot water to come on or not as well. And you can select when you want it to start working and when you want it to turn off. The pump here is currently on auto. So what that means is, is that when it's on auto, the water heater in the room heater will get up to temperature and then it will start to circulate around the van whereas continuous mode means that it will the pump will run continuously even when it's the system is cold so it'll just keep circulating everything while the system heats up so everything will sort of heat up at a bit more evenly around the van um, 
the auto is the better option just because you know that then your room and your water are nice and hot before it starts to circulate around the van. You do have delayed start so you can get it to turn on a bit later if you like. You do the display, you can change how bright it is. You can turn the little sound off so you may have noticed as I tap things it makes a little beep so you can turn that off if you don't like it. You can change the language and you can reset the whole system um, if you ever need to, that's where you can find it. If we hit menu again, this screen here is for your water heater and how you're running your room and water heater. Up the top here, this flashing number, this is a clock so you can set that, it's not a timer or anything like that. Up in the top left, this little cord means that we've got mains power plugged in. Uh, the temperature inside the van at the moment is 25 degrees. You can turn your hot water on and it'll start to heat up normally or you have a 30 minute boost. So it'll give it a nice big burst of energy um, to get your hot water heated up as fast as possible but it will only last for half an hour. The energy output, so you can select if you want it to run on mains or gas. You do have one, two and three kilowatts. You will really struggle to find somewhere that's able to support a three kilowatt drawer. So the highest you'll be able to run it on power is two kilowatts. And then you do also have gas as well. So you can run gas on its own, you can run power on its own, or you can run them together. Um, you will see that electricity gets the priority. Um, so it will try to heat as much on 240 volt as it can. But if you start to use your fridge um, and other bits and pieces on 240 volt, it will flick over to gas because it's more efficient. And then if we hit menu again, it just takes us back to that main screen there. And then to turn the whole system off, you just push and hold the little power button. Here we've got your oven, your grill and your elements. So the top piece of bench gets clipped up so it's nice and out of the way. You can then lift this piece of glass, push it as far back as it'll go. Now you've got one 240 volt and three gas elements. The 240 volt element, much like a house, you can just select a temperature and it'll start to heat up. The gas ones are very much like a barbecue. So you've got one here on the left and then the other two are on the right. So push, turn and hold at the highest flame. You'll then want to hit this igniter on the right. Once it's lit, you can then let that go and adjust the temperature from there and then it's just back to the circle at the top for off. It's really important once you've finished using any of these four elements that you make sure the element and all the grill pieces are cool to the touch because it has been known in the past if you do put the glass down while it's still hot it will shatter the glass. Now your grill and your oven operate very much or identical to the gas elements at the top so push Turn and hold, hit that same igniter there, and then you can adjust the temperature from there for both, and then back to the circle for off. Now your grill, it will ignite along that silver rail along the top, and then for your oven, it will ignite along the silver rail right at the back that's just hiding underneath that little lip there. Up in this little sort of curved cupboard by the entry door here this is the solar controller for your both your solar panels um, you don't need to worry about that it does its own thing and then just in the little cupboard above the fridge here this is your solar panel remote meter and what this does so you can see we've got a little sun we've got the panel and the dotted lines to the battery so that means that everything is connected and doing what it should. Sometimes you might get a little moon up in the top corner. That means everything is still connected. There's just not enough sun for it to be actively charging the battery. You do have a little select screen so you can get, see what you've got going on. So you've got 15.7 volts coming off the panel, some amp hours, your battery is 100% charged at 13.8 volts. Get some wattages as well. The last screen here is an error code screen, so it's currently at E0, so there's no faults. If you feel like there's something not quite right with the solar, you can come and check this error code screen. Um, there isn't a little booklet that explains them from E1 through to 6, so if you ever have any issues, you can check that. And then it's just back to the little home screen there. Here we've got the control for your Dometic fridge, so you're going to push and hold this little 
circle piece here and it'll liven itself up. Now to change the settings you're going to press the button and then you can scroll through all the different bits and pieces. So up the top here we've got temperature so you just click it to select then you can choose the temperature you'd like the fridge to be at and then click again to select it. Then you've got mode so we've got auto, battery, gas and 240 volt. So auto means that the fridge will automatically select what it thinks is most energy efficient. So you could have auto on um, and it could be running on gas, but then if you start to use the oven, it'll automatically switch itself to 240 volt to be a bit more energy efficient. The battery is not currently wired up, but it is an option. Again, like the ATC, you do need an auto electrician to wire up a 12 pin trailer plug for you for both the van and the vehicle. What this mode is meant to do is you cool the fridge down on either gas or 240 volt the night before. You can then come in, flick it to battery, and that will maintain the temperature the fridge is currently at while you tow. Um, the fridge will not cool down from warm on battery and it will not run off solar either. The gas, you can select gas, um, and then the fridge will start to cool itself down as long as your gas bottles are all connected and nice and full. And then you've got 240 volt as well. As long as you're plugged in, the fridge will start to cool down straight away. And then you've got your little back arrow. And then if we scroll through again, at the bottom here, you've got a few different sort of settings. So the little light bulb, that's for how bright you want this screen to be. The little speaker, so... This is so that you can turn the beep for if you leave the door open for too long or if there's an error off. So if it's lit up, that means that the fridge won't beep when you've left the door open for a long time. Um, otherwise it will, just to give you a little bit of a warning. The fan function is so it'll just circulate that cool air um, a little bit quicker. And then here we've got the freezer frame heater. So you can select that and what that will do is around the frame of your freezer here it will keep it warm to prevent any condensation um, and anything freezing and sticking to the seal of the freezer door and then you've just got back to your menu and then you just push and hold to turn the fridge off here we've got the inside of your toilet so the toilet bowl does rotate so you can push it out of the way if you're using the vanity and then you can adjust it to fit your legs in so up the top here you've got a little toilet cassette picture that's a little level indicator of when it's getting full so it will start to flash at you and then the big blue button is your flush so as you press that it will flush into the toilet and then when you want to open up the toilet you've got this little gray lever here so you slide it back towards the wall and that'll open up your toilet so you can open it up flush everything away and then slide it back into the closed position. It's really important you slide it back into the closed position when you're done. There is a seal in here so it seals everything up so there's no smell but also your toilet cassette will not remove from its locker unless the toilet is closed on the inside. So if you're going to empty the toilet cassette and you're feeling a bit of resistance just jump in the van and make sure that it's in that closed position. Up in the front cupboard here is a little wireless Wi-Fi router, so if you want to use this you do need to get a wee SIM card that just pops in to the top there and then the setup instructions are in a wee booklet in the drawer so you can figure out how to get your device all set up. Now with your window catches and your window stays on all windows except for the three front ones, um, they won't just rotate, you do need to push in the little button before you rotate it. Um, you can push it closed without pressing the button, but when you want to open it, you do need to push that button to release it. Um, the three front ones, you can just rotate them without having to push any button. Uh, you do have a very large front curved window, um, but you can see on such a large window, you do have quite short window stays. Um, I would recommend not opening the middle window if you don't have to or if you are opening it don't leave it open for prolonged periods of time um, because it can break these window stays due to the weight of the window.